I watched a lot of TV this year, and I enjoyed almost all of it. Some of the standouts included Reacher, a series that was a lot of dumb fun with great action and excellent moments. Alan Richardson is fucking jacked, and after seeing him play Hawk on Titans, I was happy to see him kill people in this. Archive 81 was the right amount of intrigue and horror. I would have liked it a lot better if the lead was a little bit more likable. All of Us Are Dead was an interesting zombie K-drama that kept my attention. John Berthnall had one of the year's best performances in HBO's We Own This City. And then Peacemaker was a great mix of 80s hair metal ballads and John Cena vulgarity. James Gunn made me care about a character I had no opinion on. Cena really shined in this show. Also, Vigilante was MVP. This was also an awesome year for anime. Chainsaw Man had a lot of great memorable episodes. Denji's an interesting character. Power's out here making all the anime bros horny. Aki is a tired dad, and I'm all about Kobeni. Great action and super funny moments. I got to explore the weirdness of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure with Stone Ocean. Jolene is awesome. The animation is awesome. That JoJo magic is awesome. I'm all about that father-daughter team up. There were some truly sweet moments between Jotaro and Jolene. Spy Family was a sweet surprise. I wasn't expecting a slice of life comedy with a spy, an assassin, and a psychic little girl playing makeshift family to be one of my favorite animes of the year. I saw so many people gushing over it and so I had to check it out. And I'm so glad that I did because it's a pure joy to watch. A wonderful anime. This was also the year where Attack on Titan reached its epic peak. We finally got that moment that shook so, so, so many anime-only fans to their very cores. A moment that felt bigger than life and had you thinking it was a where were you when it happened moment for all of anime. In this moment, Eren transformed from hero to villain in epic fashion. Political, poignant, powerful. This was Eren at his best. We see his full commitment to the rumbling. Controversial, yes. Apocalyptic, yes. Unforgiving, yes. We get this moment. And whether you're a fan of Eren's future motivations or the story's ending or not, at least in this moment, we got Eren at his fullest. And that was amazing to witness in real time. My Hero Academia continued to showcase why it's one of my favorites by finally animating the war arc for its sixth season. An arc many fans were highly hyped for. An arc that was a high point in the manga and brought to life with Studio Bones. We got the number one bunny hero Mirko kicking all the ass. We got OP Shiggy causing absolute destruction for the heroes. That heart-wrenching Dobby reveal hit so hard. The return of best boy Mirio was amazing, and we finally get Deku embracing his quirks in full on action. I loved every second of this, and I'm so excited to see where it goes next. And then there were the animes that I didn't get a chance to see. My Dress Up Darling, Mob Psycho 100, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, and Bleach Thousand Year Blood War. I'm sure I would have enjoyed them all, but if I'm being honest, my favorite anime this year has to be Demon Slayer's second season, the Entertainment District arc. No other anime has ever gotten the kind of jaw-dropping, speechless, and at times pure elation reaction out of me week in and week out. Demon Slayer pushed the boundaries of what animated storytelling can be. It's pure spectacle. The way it mixes its dynamic animation with its uplifting music and emotionally charged storytelling is magic. This anime brought me the most joy. Words cannot express the feeling of joy I felt connecting with the community as we watched Tanjiro and his friends engage in gorgeously animated demon fighting action scenes again and again. At this point, if you're not a fan of Demon Slayer, then keep that shit to yourself because it's God tier. Stranger Things Season 4 was a return to greatness. It felt like I was living through a cultural zeitgeist as it aired. The way it balanced horror and nostalgia and characters I loved was masterful. And there were some truly breathtaking sequences that will stay with me forever. The Umbrella Academy's third season was the best one yet that continued to deliver wacky, dysfunctional family fun and chaos that I absolutely adored. I love this cast. I die for this cast. Luther, Allison, Diego, Lila, Klaus, Five, Victor, New Ben, and now Sloane. Seeing these characters awkwardly learn to love and support each other is top-tier television. I loved it. 
And then there was Obi-Wan Kenobi, my favorite show of the year. Growing up with the Star Wars prequel series, this was everything I wanted for a follow-up to Obi-Wan and Anakin stories. I already spoke about my love and nostalgia for the series in a separate video, please check it out. So I just wanted to quote my favorite praise for the show from Tumblr user Hate Anakin. This heartbreaking miniseries is the bridge between the beginning and the end, the fall and the rise, the tragedy and the hope. The two separate trilogies have finally become one. This epic seven part tale of a father, his two children and his brother, the love story of family. Obi-Wan Kenobi was a great show.